Welcome to another broadcast of the Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Thursday mornings at 9.30 at the Lorain County Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings, and as always, you are invited to attend. Would you stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning and welcome to the August 19th meeting of the Lorraine County Board of Commissioners. And I would just like to introduce Carl Matzal. Matt Sal, he's the uh, Plain Dealer reporter who's going to be uh, following us around for a little bit. Welcome. Madam Clerk. Okay. Um, job and Family Services Bills. So move. Second. Discussion. Ms. Vasey. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. Uh, there are no investments today. Uh, appropriations. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Vasey? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Transfers? So move. Second. Discussion? Ms. Vasey? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Advances and repayments? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Ms. Aye. Vasey? Aye. Requisitions? So move. Second. Discussion? Ms. Facey? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye, with the exceptions of 6, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. 6, 11, 12. 6, 11, 6, 12, 6, 13, 6, 14, 6, 15. Okay. Travel expenses? I want to make sure that my exception is noted under travel. <laughs> Not requisitions. Oh. <laughs> thank you confused you. me. I would like to thank Miss Yvonne Newton for pointing that out. What? I have no uh, exceptions for number so six. So you have no exceptions no. for advances and repayments? But I'll make a motion for travel with my exceptions of six, eleven. No, he had no exceptions for requisitions. Okay. okay. First, I don't know, third base. Okay. So move on travel. So travel expenses. I'll second. Okay. No further discussion. No, I just put my exceptions down. I'll put your exceptions. Okay. That's Ms. basically Facey. five people from uh, the clerk of courts going to Cincinnati to watch a computer system. So I'm voting no for the travel. So. Okay. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. With my exceptions. Okay. Thank you. Uh, bills. Some second. No. Any discussion? Ms. Blair. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. Ms. Facey? Aye. Number nine, authorize various personnel actions as indicated on the summary sheet for employees within the jurisdiction of the Ring County Board of Commissioners. At the conclusion of today's board meeting, the commissioners may recess into executive session to discuss personnel and new hires. Uh, I'll move for approval of the summary sheet containing five items. Second. Any discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Facey? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Uh, number 10 under commissioners, approve the Lorain County Board of Commissioners meeting minutes and waive the reading of the same for July 1st, 8th, 15th, 22nd, and August 5th of 2004. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Ms. Facey? Aye. Number 11, authorize a salary increase for Alex Jasensky Jr., Magistrate, Grade 34E at Lorraine Municipal Court, retroactive to May 17, 2004, from a biweekly rate of $887.54 to $896.88, which reflects the county's two to five share. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Facey? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? 
Aye. Number 12, appoint Wilbert Ray Noble, O'Leary, Ohio, to the Alcohol and Drug Addiction Services Board of Lorain County. This position's term expires June of 2008. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Moore? Aye. Ms. Facey? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Under engineer number 13, approve placing the following road resurfacing projects on Noaka's TIP. All projects have been reviewed and recommended for approval by Ken Carney, Lorain County Engineer. Number one is Island Road, 1,989 miles. Eaton Township line uh, to the... Um, I think that's 1.989 miles. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay, Chan. It looked like a comma. Well, it could very well be, but I just don't think there's that many miles. Okay. In Island Road. All right. So that's 1.989 miles. Eaton Township line to CSX Railroad in Eaton Township. And the cost is 1,000, excuse me, $1,512,000 and includes engineering. Number two is Cowley Road, 2.67 miles. Crocker Road to State Route 82 at Eaton Township. And the cost is $1,855,000, which includes engineering. Number three is Grafton Road. State Route 57 to Illyria South Corporation Line in Carlisle Township, and the cost is $740,000. Number four is West Ridge Road, Russia Road to Middle Ridge Road in Illyria and Carlisle Townships. The cost is $936,600. Number five is Russia Road, Oberlin Illyria Road to State Route 58, in Elyria and Carlisle Township, and the cost is $971,000, excuse me, $971,180. So moved. Second. Discussion? Does Mr. Carney have anything to add to this? Can I see your... Yes, good morning. Good morning, morning Ken. Thank you, <coughs> Mr. Moore. I want to give a brief explanation if I could. This is over $6 million of the road construction we intend to do within probably the year 2007. This is a good start of applying for the, being put on the TIP the Transportation Improvement Program. So these resolutions are needed to accompany my application to NOAC in order to establish that status on the Transportation Improvement Program, which is by the, if everyone knows, is the Metropolitan Planning Organization called NOACA. And this is one of the first steps in order to obtain that money. Uh, and I'm proud to say the county engineer's office is quite aggressive in obtaining those 80% fundings, and this will help us apply for the remaining 20% through the Ohio Public Works Commission. I uh, just wanted to let you know that's, that's the process. In addition, you'll notice that number three, number four, number five does not have engineering included. We'll be designing those in-house with our existing staff. The other two would be uh, requests for qualifications on consulting firms, and they'll be doing those for us and we expect to get our full reimbursement for that engineering cost in itself also. So I'm here to answer any questions if you have any. And thank you, commissioners, for being at the meeting last night and Ron Trining, yourself, for the 6 o'clock meeting and the commissioners for the 7 o'clock. I appreciate that very much. Uh, it was very explanative, uh, and uh, I thank you again for that. You're welcome. Any further discussion? Is there any further discussion? Okay. Uh, Ms. Facey? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Okay. Lorraine Medina, Community Based Correctional Facility, number 14, approve an additional $7,500 to amend purchase order number CBCF 041229 for Joe Ferret Architect. The original purchase order was for the amount of $41,500. So moved. Second. Discussion? Yes. Does Captain Dross have anything to add to this? Since I 
not in set now. This is a CBC. Is a CBC. Oh, CBC. Community, yeah. community based correction for Oh, sorry. I thought it was ours. <laughs> well, it is, but it isn't. But doesn't he? I'm trying to find out why. Okay, then. Do you know why it went over from the original bid? I believe they've done additional architecture work there. Uh, I recall several months back that they received additional grant money and they were doing more work out there, and that's probably what it's from. I won't swear to it, but it's, it seems to be uh, uh, linked to that. This is an expansion uh, for to include women now. Right. You remember we, we, we got additional grant. It was several months back we were granted some additional funding, and I'm, 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 it's quite possible that uh, they used that money and they had to do some re-architectural work to spend the money, and okay. that's probably what but this is. But you don't is. know? Not for certain, no. With the sheriff now? No. I, there's no reason for oh, really? you to know. Oh, okay. um, do you want to check in the file and see what's in there? Number 14. So this isn't on our, this is on our facility. Well, what, well, what actually, this is, yeah, is. CBCF is our facility, mm -hmm. uh, but it's run by, uh, in conjunction with Medina County by a board of, of for lack of another term, trustees, and, uh -huh. and the judges are on it, and they're pretty autonomous. We're mostly a pass-through agency for, for the expenses with them. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you could, if you don't approve it, it obviously won't go through, but uh, for the most part, uh, we're a conduit. Well, several years ago, I spearheaded this project, and what it was was the state pays for the facility. We gave them the land, and within a period of time, I believe it was like five years, the county would own the building, and it would be paid for by the state. But at that time, it was a facility just for men. And women also have the same problems that men have, drug and alcohol. But this, these are state inmates, and they are there to re, being rehabilitated. And this kind of stops the, um, the revolving door. It's been a great project. And now what we're doing now is adding on for women. Well, that's fine. That, but the bid was, uh, it looks like uh, there's two lines here that didn't have bids on it. So that's all. I'm just trying to figure out why it went over. Because what I'm showing here shows 36000 was billed, and it's up to 48500 in architectural work. So that's all. There's not much in there. I can make an inquiry on your behalf, Commissioner. Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, the judges, there's judges on the board, and I'm sure they've really reviewed it. Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Facey? Aye. Mr. Moore? No. Mr. Cordes, County Administrator? <coughs> Commissioners, I just got a piece of housekeeping. Uh, 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 oh, actually, we need a resolution for housekeeping this morning. Uh, apparently, we were purchasing property uh, for easement right of ways over on Pearl Street, and we were successful at gaining the property uh, for that potential uh, future sewer project. Uh, but the title company changed its name, and we can't get them paid. We need to change the name of on our resolution. So I'm going to request a, a resolution, or at least a modification to resolution 04587, um, changing the name of Lorain County title to American Land Lawyers title uh, so that uh, we can continue that. Uh, what was the number purchase. on that resolution? Which was the resolution number? No, I wasn't going far enough. The original resolution was 04587. I'll so move to amend resolution 04587 for a name change. A second. Okay. Discussion. Mm -hmm. Ms. Facey. Uh, discussion. Oh, sorry. Okay. okay. I don't remember which one it was. No, that's it. Okay. Okay. So you did acquire it then? Is that what you're saying? Yes, uh, we were able to acquire that. Uh, that was the property that was up for auction, and mm -hmm. we, we, we were able to acquire it at quite an advantage. 
okay. to, the, to the county and the project uh, before it went to auction. So make sure no one overbid us when we buy it out from them. So. Well, actually, once we put the easements on it, uh, we'll okay. be able to uh, resell it resell it, and recoup uh, more than what we're just having some fun with you. Okay. You've been having fun since last night. Now, that sounds kind of a little odd there. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we had a sewer meeting last night, just so everybody knows. <laughs> so, uh, can we deal with this issue? Or you I just said, yeah. I just, the Did you have answer. a motion? No, I yes. didn't. Motion. Yeah, you had a motion in a second. Okay. Well, I asked for discussion. Yep, and I, we got done, we're done discussing. So, we're okay, Mr. Moore? Aye. Okay. Uh, did, you, did you move on it? You moved. Yeah. You, do you want me to do it? Did you? Yeah, we just voted. I thought oh, we okay. did, but. I. 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 Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Janice. Okay, thank you. Um, oh. Assistant County Prosecutor Jerry Ennis. Oh, oh excuse no. me. No. I'll wait. No, uh, I'll defer to the prosecutor. I don't have any report this morning. So. Commissioner's report. I have none. I have none. Uh, just to, to verify where Commissioner Moore was last night. <laughs> he, he was at Columbia Township's new fire station. Um, did, you, did you look at that? Uh, they used the grant money that they got from mm -hmm. us. And Jerry, were you aware of this? You worked long and hard with us over grant money from uh, mitigation, sound mitigation. They used $130,000 that came from uh, that project to uh, build a fire station addition. It's really very nice. And uh, anyway, I typed up my notes from the meeting last night uh, for those two sewer projects, and I shared it with anybody who was there. This is my recollection. So I think we had a very amicable meeting. I think that the engineer has um, some ideas that will uh, reduce the costs of these sewers so that at least these two projects can kind of go forward. The only trouble is, um, um, a decision will not be held this year. It will be held next year, and I think you guys arranged that so that you wouldn't be there. <laughs> well, I told you I was ready to vote last night. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I guess that... For all those that were there, oh, yes, understand why that's funny. <laughs> and uh, I just have one other item. I uh, penned Mr. Cordes a note about the architect for the um, um, courthouse. Uh -huh. He asked for a week, and, and uh, he's got a week, and uh, time's a wasting, and we have people that need to be moved. So, do you do you have a recommendation for us? Well, I think the recommendation was contained in last week's resolution. Uh, we went back and took a look at it, and uh, looked at the list of uh, what the prices were, and. Uh, that entity seems to be the most responsive right now. And you're still satisfied with that? Then? Well, s satisfied is a relative term. <laughs> well, uh, as, as far as you can be satisfied at this point in time? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, I would move that we um, approve with um, Clark and Post. Proven and or in an agreement with Clark and Post in the amount of twelve thousand six hundred dollars, plus reimbursable expenses not to exceed twenty five hundred dollars to perform architectural services, for alterations to the Lorraine County uh, Courthouse for adult probation and forensics laboratory. This will be paid from account four zero 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 four zero two zero one four five zero one two four Justice Center Professional Services and was the lowest proposal received. No way. You're not happy anymore? No, I'm, uh, I'm, always, happy. <laughs> I'm always happy. It's all about attitude. And I choose a good one. So. Oh, really? Okay, I good. I to use that line. Um, mm -hmm. Tell you what, it's, uh, I, I got the agenda. And that's why I like getting the agenda ahead of time so I can review it. And I'm not prepared today, but I'd like to have it on the agenda for next Thursday to vote. So. Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes my report. Okay. No. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, we're not. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Fair week. We're, we're not meeting next Thursday. Not at all? We're not? No. 
or the week after that. Well, we don't have a meeting on September 2nd as well. Why is that? But that's the Justice Center ceremony. David, would you care to reconsider your <laughs> two weeks? We're not going to be meeting. Well, that means we will be three, three weeks what, before we get back what, together. Um, let's put uh, that resolution on hold for now. And um, I'll tell you what, do you have the list, Yvonne, of all the architects that put in their bid? Oh, well, Yvonne wouldn't have it. Who has it? Karen Davis has Karen, it. And I, I, I see I, that I, list. I forwarded a copy to your office last week, Commissioner. Last week. And Secretary on Thursdays. You want to go see if that list is available? I should say my administrative assistant. S Sandy, see if there's, there may be a list on my desk to a copy of that list. Can we continue with the rest? Okay, so should I continue? Yeah. Okay. All right, um, any old business for today? I have none. None here. Any new business for today? None here. None. Uh, board correspondence? I move the reading be waived. Okay. Second. Any discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Facey? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Should we open for public comment? Mm -hmm. Any public comment for today? Anyone uh, who wishes to address the board, would you come to the microphone? State your name. Don't all run. <laughs> well, I did receive a phone call from Bob Kish. He is in Fairbanks, Alaska. Um, I didn't get back with him. He left his number, and I didn't call him back, so he probably wanted to proxy some comments through me, but unfortunately I didn't get enough time. He said that there's uh, forest fires raging around him and it's like a fog. And that was mm. the message I have on my uh, machine today. So I'm sure Bob is well. So. Anybody? Nobody? Okay. Want to talk about the sewers again last night? <laughs> no. <laughs> about the access meeting. Want to talk about that or no? I heard what they did. Oh. <laughs> That was last night also. Does uh, Ron want to give a rundown? Or no, I thought to... Jerry Ennis was the one that, or was Ron? We'll oh, you'll prepare for, okay, I didn't know how that was going to come down. So. How many people were at the meeting? Uh oh, sounds like. Ballpark. One, two, three, <laughs> four. I can tell you okay. about spending ten and, and a half hours with Jim Cordes all day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, public comment, good. <laughs> Five people were at the uh, at the meeting. Um, we sent out letters. I think the committee size is 26 or 27. We gave them uh, ample notice to uh, to be there, but there were five people, all representing townships, um, with the exception of the chair. Ken Carney was in attendance, and then I was the sixth person. But I don't vote, so I don't count. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. Yeah, it was a unanimous vote. Barb's right. <laughs> Do we move to take a bathroom break? Hmm? You want to take a five minutes? Yes, I'd like to take a five minute break. Take a five minute break. Uh, commissioners, uh, thank you for the, uh, the break and the ability to go uh, find this memo. Uh, for the record, it, it appears that as I indicated that I had sent this to Commissioner Moore, but it was laying in the middle of my desk. So it's quite possible and quite highly probable uh, that for the first time this year I made a mistake and didn't send it to him. Uh, hey. the, uh, well, we are looking you, right, David? Uh, so uh, I apologize if, uh, if, uh, that it didn't get here. to you. <laughs> uh, but I would ask for your, your uh, indulgence and reconsideration of this issue since we're, we're not going to meet for an additional three weeks and we need to get some uh, issues on the way and you have the information before you now. Okay. Janice, would you read item number 12? Number 12. Okay. Approve and enter into an agreement with Clark and Post Architects Incorporated, Lorain, Ohio, in the amount of $12,600 plus reimbursable expenses not to exceed $2,500 to perform architectural services for alterations to the Lorain County Courthouse for adult probation and forensics laboratory. 
This will be paid from account number 40004-0201-450124, which is the Justice Center Professional Services, and was the lowest, and this was the lowest proposal received. I'll move for approval. I'll second for discussion. Okay, what was entailed on this architectural bid? What does it entail? I wasn't, uh, I wasn't directly uh, involved with all the discussions. My, my understanding, though, is that uh, we have some uh, uh, issues that need to be addressed to the city of Valeria to be able to get oxygen permits for the, the uh, move in, and there's going to be some. Uh, uh, reconfiguration. I, I don't think there's going to be a huge amount, but we have to comply with uh, the specific building codes and regulations within the city of Valeria. Almost, almost without exception, these days we we can't do much of anything. Any time we do renovation, we need an architect. Right. I don't the, care what it is. And, it's a shame, but we do. And it may be the right thing to do. There was a time we used to do a lot of this work ourselves, you know, 10 years ago. But you know, the times have changed, and we're required to have the stamp from the engineers and the architects on most anything we do. But uh, we. Um, what kind of direction is he getting on what to do? I mean, I would hate to see him start destroying any of the historical value that's in, in not the not at all, Commissioner. And and I, thank you for bringing it up. I spent uh, about five or six hours in the Justice Center, uh, excuse me, in the courthouse with the you know, the Chronicle Journal's people. Uh, excuse me, Chronicle Journal, the Chronicles folks on uh, Monday morning and in well into Monday afternoon visiting spots of the Justice Center that hadn't probably been visited in 20 or 30 years. You mean the courthouse? Uh, courthouse. Good. It's been a long week already. Uh, the the uh, uh, and uh, the the areas that we're going to have these folks in are not going to disturb anything that uh, will have future renovation value to bring the courthouse back to his, its historical significance. Um, I would encourage you uh, all to go over there and, and take that same walkthrough and, and and look at the various years of renovations and continue to climb up through the renovations. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's an amazing tale and an amazing story that's going to be told there uh, once we were able to gain support funding and so forth to do the proper renovation of that building sometime hopefully in the near future. So we're not going to be disturbing any of that where we're using. We're, we're using parts of the building that, that have nothing to do with that. Uh, and the renovations are going to be kept down to a very bare minimum. But like I said, we have to have some stamp of approval uh, to be able to move forward with that. Well, that's fine. I've done the tour. Um, my concern is that, that the price differences we have here is that we're going to have the same issue that we had earlier today, which is an architect coming back and asking for more money. They, they're always free to ask. Well, I have a we're just not going to give them anything. Yeah. Well, anyway. And I'll, and I'll reiterate what I said before. I believe this is a waste of money. I think that this is going to be a temporary move. and. We should look for a location where they're going to be permanent and not pay the architect to do all this, then pay the renovation, and then find another location within a couple of years or a year. And I think it's just a, a real waste. And not only that, but it destroys um, the, the courthouse. I mean, it's, it's a historical place, and it should be used for that purpose. There, There's a lot of... Um, history in this county, and it, it's just hidden. People don't know about it, starting with Mr. Ely, who founded uh, Illyria, and the entire county. I mean, it got here today by people that worked hard to do it, and nobody knows about these people. We had Judge Howard's wife here. Judge Howard has history. There's so many people that, that, that have so much history that should be brought out, and, and the people should be aware of it. We can have a room in there where, just like at the State House, they have a room where kids can come in, groups of people can come in, and they have a narrator explaining all the history. We can do the same thing. It would attract tourists. It would attract residents from all over the county just to know what brought us to where we're at today. Okay. But I just feel that this so is going to be a and waste. We're moving adult probation and forensics lab in there, correct? Anyone else? Uh, we have the appeals court. Uh, working out of uh, Judge Zaleski's uh, old courtroom, which is the bigger one. Mm -hmm. No, uh, I agree with uh, what Commissioner Bassey just said. Um, in order to correct that, then I guess we have some empty space in the Justice Center. We can move the adult probation and forensics lab in the Justice Center on the empty space. A few more 
habitable to do that. Would you prefer to do that? Either there, we have no, a space on, on Broad be, Street. We have the J.C. Penney building. It has to be close to the courthouse, according to the judges. They'd rather have it right there. Well, that's not that far. Yeah. I mean, some people could use I'm, the exercise. I'm in support of uh, moving the forensics lab and the adult probation in the Justice Center. Commissioner, just so you know, that speaking with the uh, the engineer, some engineers and architects, um, they have indicated to us that a proper historical renovation of the courthouse would cost between 20 and 25 million dollars. I understand that, but it would be a start. We could start. Uh, the building has enough history there where we could start on the main floor. See, the, the, I'm not going to discuss whether or not we should have it. I mean, the, you can preserve it. It's a good building. It's, I think it's not going to cost that much. I've heard four to five million, which is still, if you don't have a purpose for the building, there's no need to spend any money on the building. Um, well, that's just my own personal opinion. Um, I'm going to go back to the issue at hand, which is we have adult probation and the forensics lab that doesn't have a home, and they're not going to have a home very soon, and we have to do something about that. But look at all the parking we have over there on Broad Street. We, and, and from who, us or, my, or my the city. Excuse me, but when I go by over here at the forensic lab, there's people standing outside in a line all the time. Why should we have that when there's a space over here? We we are renting space on Broad Street. There's an insurance company in there right now. And I'm sure there's other space in there that we can use for them. Parking is available. It would be a perfect location. I'm going right back to the uh, how many floors we got empty one or two I think we have one that's totally empty and one that's only one we have, courtroom we only have we have an extra courtroom that's for visiting or right. watch cases and we have uh, the fifth floor that has not been um, it's only shelled out and that's what 23,000 square feet I don't have the numbers it's roughly yeah but you know that you're going to have more judges in the future they're already hammering they want judges yeah they're always going to hammer um, my concern again is we have to do something in regards to the adult probation and forensics lab. We, we would and not be able to accommodate the forensic lab travel in the Justice Center given the security and the current hours of operation of the Justice Center. Uh, the forensic lab is open in the evening. Uh, you'll see the people out there right now because they have no space. Uh, it will require additional security procedures and require additional staffing to accommodate. So what about the just the old courthouse? Are you gonna do what's the issue with that then? We don't have to provide the security or any of the uh, facilities. Adult probation and forensic labs take care of themselves there, but at the justice center, the sheriff's department takes care of the security and the hours of operation. Um, I'm not trying to be contrary to your position. No, but I'm not. There is no position. I'm just trying to find a home for him. So. So we're back to adult probation. They could uh, be in the uh, Justice Center then, right? And we're stuck with Forensics Lab, which just needs a small space. You got an idea, Commissioner Bassey, or? I just gave mine, Broad Street. What's on Broad, we're not, that's too far away. So that's my understanding that they want it closer. Plus, we're gonna be we're gonna need the space if we put the transportation center in there. I think we have to tear those buildings down. You know, it's, excuse me, but it's just like a shopping center. If I could get a parking right in the front of the store, I am real happy. Mm -hmm. But if I have to walk, then it, I'm not real happy. But it's good exercise. <laughs> no, I know that. But I don't. I'm not talking about parking right now. <laughs> Well, or is that what you want to talk about, parking? Well, you're, it's still a part of the department. They need parking no matter what. And with the amount of people that go in there, I'm sure they need quite a bit of parking. And, you know, where are the they going to find it downtown? Forensic or? It's been a problem down here. We've got it there. We've got parking. We tore down the, the one building. It's all vacant land. I think there's a plan for that property, isn't there? I thought we had a plan as the uh, for Lorain County Transit. We do. We're still still trying to line up the funding. Uh, as soon as the transportation bill is approved, we'll be able to move forward on the train station. And uh, we believe we have about four to five million. We're still about three million dollars short, but we have enough to be able to do uh, have effective outcomes that are still usable with the expenditures. Uh, until we get the rest of the money. Even with the transit there, you're going to have parking there. You're going to have parking available. Well, I, I'm not 
My concern is... I'm just trying to change your mind. On what? <laughs> on where to put them. <laughs> oh, no, I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, it's, my, my issue is I don't like the fact that these two departments are going to be in the old courthouse, but as a, temporary as a temporary solution, I was supportive of it because we have to move ahead in order to get adult probation out of the, I don't want to say, the, the, the condition that the property that's in right now is not safe. And uh, the uh, forensics lab is right in the middle of the parking lot. So, Commissioner, um, I, I fully believe this to be, uh, uh, while we say temporary, it's over a number <coughs> of years, this is not a permanent solution. And we need to develop permanent solutions for the courthouse, and we need time to develop those. We, and they're gonna, it's going to take years of putting together a plan and putting together funding sources and putting together grant money and foundation money. Um, I disagree. I think we can start right where we're at with the building the way it is, start right there and move on. And then that would really encourage people to contribute to renovate the courthouse. Which is, okay, let's say that is the case then. So where are we going to put adult probation? I'm not in support of Okay, anything. what about putting them in the lower level over here? We move these people upstairs. We've got all this space around us. Move our people up here. Put adult probation in the forensic lab, lower level. I'm, I'm interested in putting adult probation in the Justice Center. That's the only place I'm interested in. Yeah, but you're going to need that for the future. You're going to need that space. Uh, yeah, well. We'll be opening our second time capsule when we're ready to do that, I think. So, I don't know um, about that. So that's the only position I, I mean, that's the position I have. If no one's willing to support that, then I'm willing to go back to the temporary position. But those are my only two positions. Forensic Lab, if that's an issue with security, then maybe I have no idea where to put Forensic Lab except for, well, you could probably leave their lab alone and just build around it with a parking lot and not touch their lab. You're right. We sure could do that. We'll have that ugly building right in the middle of our nice parking lot. Uh, well, right the, next to that other building. <laughs> I, Commissioner, I, I was trying to add a little levity to lighten the mood here. I, I really wouldn't recommend that we leave that building and, and we finish the project. Uh, and recognizing that the forensic lab and adult probation used to be co-located. They are one department. They are not two different departments. We split them up when we started doing the Justice Center project and moved them out of the building that they were co-located together in and, and dispersed them around other facilities we had. It, it, it makes sense, and I'm not arguing the Justice Center, the courthouse for the moment, but it makes sense to keep these two entities co-located and together if we can do it. Uh, that's the way they used to be at one time. Um, so I wasn't sure that you were aware of it. It's been some time since they've been co-located. I believe when you came to the county, they were already dispersed, sir. So, uh, Hence, we're back to day one. We're back to where we're at right now today, which is as a temporary solution. I'm, I'm, I don't like it, but we put it in the old courthouse. It's just there's an a window of an opportunity today that if we're willing to put them in the Justice Center, I, I would be supportive of that motion or that activity. Since we do have excess funds available in the uh, capital improvement fund, you want to pass it on? The note says there is a board meeting next week. Well, so it's yeah. fairly. So next week, so let me ask you this then. You're not supportive of putting those two places in the Justice Center? No. Okay. I think that the Justice Center I, I was built with the understanding favorite. that that extra space was for the future and the courtroom needs. And I think we should preserve it for that. Yeah. Okay, then we're stuck right back to day one, which is whether or not to go with Clark and Post to spend $12,000 to move the forensic, oh, we're moving both forensic and adult probation in there, correct? That's correct. And That's correct, Commissioner. We're going to maintain one of the courtrooms for the, uh, the, park, <coughs> for the appellate court. They've already been meeting there, sir. Okay. How many times did we move them already? Adult probation was in, what, weren't they in the Hazel Weber? Then we moved them over to They're there now. The, the location um, that, that we well. purchased where the Justice Center is. Forget what the title, the, the title company. As we purchased uh, older buildings, because right, we, we were kept so precious. Right, we moving them. Well, they had to be moved for various projects, and uh, the last the last move is to where they are now, and that occurred, I want to say, in 1998. We moved them about two or three different times already. Probably more than that, uh, but I'm, I'm aware of two or three myself in the last 10 years. 
remembering that that department's also been growing, and, and the more grant money it gains, the more employees they gain, and they vouch their their needs have outstripped their space on several occasions. And here we're going to do it to them again. I don't know about we, but well, today we're going to. <laughs> Commissioners, I don't think that we are doing anything to them. We need we're moving to them around like they're like they're checkers. We can move them in the justice center, leave them there. And then what are you going to, what is the, I mean, I'm not talking about us, but it's going to be people after us that's going to have to decide again, where are they going to put new courtrooms when, when they need to, you know, when they have new judges, where are they going to put the courtrooms for them? They're going to put them in the old courthouse? That's why we built that justice center with the additional space. Well, it's up to you and Betty. You have my stand. Well, since I can't use the space of the old building, and since uh, there's no other options, and I, as I said when I supported it in the first place, is I don't like it, but uh, as long as it's temporary, then I don't have a problem supporting it. So there was an opportunity to move them all into one, but I guess that just died. So we're done talking. <laughs> Want to take a vote? Ms. Blair. Ms. Aye. Aye. Ms. Basie? Nay. Commissioners, uh, before you adjourn, because this was your last issue, I believe, uh, obviously we have a scheduling issue with our, with our meetings. Normally the board does not meet during fair week. Uh, whether we took official action not to, uh, I think we should, for clarification, decide today. Uh, whether the board's going to meet next week or not, and what would be the pleasure of the board so we can notify I have the no problem with meeting. I don't have a problem with meeting. Would you like to meet at the fair and have a no. meeting? No. That would be great. <laughs> yes, I would. No. If you're asking me, I would love to. No. <laughs> I always thought having a meeting from the fair would be a wonderful thing. I thought it would be fun to have it there, and we can bid on turkeys and chickens at the same time, because that's the junior fair day, I think. Mm -hmm. so, the uh, junior bids time. So I don't have a problem meeting next Thursday. It's the first day of school, so I'm going to be back to that regiment. <laughs> what no grade are you in now, David? I don't know. I never <laughs> made a pass eighth, it seems, today. With yeah. no disrespect to Madam President, so that's, that's a majority there, so we'll have a meeting next so week. Were, okay. And we were talking about the security at the Justice Center. I sent a memo because I do have some concerns. I'm hoping, uh, did we include the sheriff with, I, in the memo? I, I, I read your memo this morning. Yeah, and I think that you were going to talk with the sheriff about it. Yeah, but I, I, deliveries, we, I have a little bit of concern because these people, even the UPS, they're walking all through the building. And I suggest that maybe all deliveries after checked in by the Sheriff's Department, that they be left at the information desk and that whoever is at the information desk call the department and they send someone down to pick up the delivery instead of having people run all over looking for the departments. I, uh, Sheriff, probably did you an in-service. My, my response to Ms. Vase this morning in my memo was, gee, sounds good. The sheriff's responsible for all this. I'll send you a letter to him. <laughs> uh, so you'll uh, probably be getting it shortly. Uh, and then if you want to work together with us, I'd be very appreciative. But uh, I w I'd already instructed Sandy to forward it on your concerns. Okay, and then another one, too, was employees. We have two lines there, and I would just suggest that maybe employees and attorneys use one line and the public use another? They already are, aren't they, Tim? Yeah. Commissioner Basie, that's the way it's set up. Is the it? Employees use the one on the side wall to the right, and the uh, <coughs> public uses the one on the left. OK, thank you. Well, that's all I have. I'll get answers from the sheriff for you. Don't no, I know. He'll, he'll do his best to, to work out <coughs> the problems there. I move to adjourn. Second. Hi. Hi. It's Blair. Tracy? Hi. Meeting <laughs> adjourned. <laughs>Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Thursday mornings at 9.30 at the Lorain County Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings, and as always, you are invited to attend.
This year, Lorain County has the privilege of taking part in a celebration that was 200 years in the making. We're gathered here today for an important event to break the mold of our commemorative Ohio Bicentennial Bell. This event holds a special meaning for me because breaking the mold in Lorain County can apply to more than just the Bicentennial Bell. Breaking the mold is what our citizens and public officials are doing when they gather together to celebrate Ohio's unique 200-year history. I'd like to welcome you to Ohio's 200th birthday celebration, to Lorain County's 158th fair, and to the 181st year of Lorain County's founding. On behalf of the Board of County Commissioners, it's our pleasure and our honor to accept this on behalf of all the citizens and all the residents and everybody in Lorain County. This is your bell. We present it to you. Thank you. One of the things that I was concerned about is whether or not in 2003 we'd be celebrating Ohio's past and thinking about the good old days or whether we'd be talking about Ohio's future and the good new days. And I want you to know that and I believe that the best is yet to come for our great state. Commission and for the Verdon Company to be here at the 158th Lorraine County Fair. We thank you so much for coming. We've got a wonderful two days in store for you. I think that the icon of a bell in America, in Ohio, is something, something that is wonderful. First of all, with the foundry work, we honor our heritage in Ohio, our industrial background, but then the bell it seems to me represents everything good about America. Obviously the icon with the Liberty Bell, but more importantly, bells represent freedom of worship, bells represent freedom of speech, freedom of assembly. There's bells ring for every joyous occasion, weddings. There's also bells that ring for funerals. A bell rings for the New York Stock Exchange start every day. So I think the icon that Steve George chose as a bell for each Ohio county is a significant thing. This bell is free to the county and it'll last a thousand years. We think that's a great gift. Dinner bell, that's right. Certainly, how could I forget that? Looking at me, you can tell I don't give up dinner very easily. We start the process by inviting 40 to 50 of the local kids of the county to help us uh, load small ingots of bronze into the furnace.
So we start with loading the furnace with ingots of bronze. We use a propane furnace. So we bring the bronze up to 2200 degrees where it is a liquid form. And once the ladle is filled, we'll put the furnace back in the upright position and we will snake the ladle off with the crane, lower it to the ground where we can skim off any impurities. Now this is the part that's not a lot of fun when you have 2200 degree metal above your head. We then pour it into a sand mold, which we have created for the Ohio Bell. We are making a bell that is very beautiful besides sounding good. Next event, we have a local dignitary take an 18 pound bronze sledgehammer and whack away at the sand mold. We give them a ceremonial uh, three whacks with a hammer. The truth is very, very important that whoever does this is weak enough that they not damage the bell. Then we take over with jackhammers, sledgehammers, etc. All right, well, that's good. Ladies and gentlemen, Marine County Bicentennial Bell. How about another round of applause? Once the bell is free from the mold, we'll take four to five hours to clean it, which includes sanding, polishing, highlighting, and uh, actually staining part of the bell. County Commissioners, it's our pleasure and our honor to accept this on behalf of all the citizens and all the residents and everybody in Lorraine County. This is your bell. We present it to you. You know, we, we, we have the great generation that uh, has fought and died for our country. We, we think it's wonderful to have them to ring our bell first. Just wonderful. It's Very heartwarming.
Welcome to another broadcast of the Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Thursday mornings at 9.30 at the Lorain County Administration.